So I've already started this video, but I need to preface this with what I'm doing here because uh, first off, I'm really excited to be putting a solar package on this 193 I've got. Um, and part of the reason is because on the 2021 190 I have, it came equipped with a factory solar package. And I realized immediately, I've got another video on it, but I realized immediately how awesome it is. I rent these out and uh, it's great. I can have it sitting here. I don't need to plug it in. In fact, I basically never plug it in and it stuff's not getting run, but sometimes, you know, you either need to disconnect the battery or plug it in if it sits for long enough you're gonna kill the battery so the convenience of me just being able to park it and not worry about it is awesome but there's a whole nother level I feel like the factory system pretty much does that but it doesn't do a whole lot more than that it's got like a single hundred watt panel it does have an inverter I think a thousand watt inverter so it's got some nice features with it but it's it's very small scale and so I'm not going crazy but on the 193 here I'm doing a 400 watt system with Renergy 100 watt panels, four of them obviously. Uh, I'm doing a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter and I'm doing a 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. So this is gonna be like several steps above this 190 here. So I'm kinda curious to see how it all works out. So right now I am just getting everything kinda situated and making sure where I wanna mount it is gonna work for wire lengths and things like that. So what I've done is I've pulled out the lower bunk and there were no screws even holding the plywood here in. we've got i've got my my ems surge protector mounted in the back there uh just now i pulled out the panel i don't know where i set it here but i pulled out there's a just a you know thin wooden panel that kind of covers that up so i pulled that out um this is where i'm going to locate everything and this was not the first thought I had, but I think this makes sense because of its location. It's going to work out good for anything. I don't really want to sacrifice a storage area, but it is storage area and that's going to be the best way. So uh, I've got that panel pulled off back there and then I've got my sticker pulled off. There's a little bit of residue, but there's the sticker, the solar prepped sticker right there. So I peeled that back. I drilled a hole with a spade bit in the wall here. And I also actually popped the thermostat off so I could get in a little bit of better access because these wires were actually kind of over here so I couldn't quite reach them. Uh, I just used a little pick to fish them out here. Just a little pick. Uh, like I said, they were in there pretty far but I was able to reach in and and snag them with the pick. So, uh, so that's kind of where I'm at. So my charge controller is gonna mount right up here um, now the one thing I do need to figure out is I so I fished these wires out and I believe that um, they come from the top but then I don't know if they loop to the battery I'm not sure like I, I, I pulled them out and and it's a loop so I don't know where they I know they come from the roof but I don't know where they go to so I'm gonna clip them right in the middle and then I'm gonna test them so hopefully I won't be making too many mistakes here you're kind of gonna be learning this right along with me here um, I couldn't find a lot of information on this so that's why I'm making this video it might not be the most professional video but that's all right if it's got the info you need so I have now clipped this loop and I wanted to be careful because presumably one end of it, pre presumably it goes straight from the 12 volt source, whether it ties straight into the batteries or by the power converter, I don't know, but it, one end should go to the 12 volt power supply, the battery, and the other end goes up to the roof to where the solar panels hook up. So what I did, I clipped these and was careful since it's live, 12 volts, you're not gonna hurt yourself, but you could pop a fuse or a breaker. So um, I, I clipped it and I stripped both of the grounds back and uh, I've got, it's, it's super handy. I've just got a little fluke meter, a cheap meter here, but I like to get the leads uh, with the alligator clips and I'll use just one of them. So it basically gives you an extra hand. So I've got my, my ground clipped on there. I'll turn it on to DC. So um, we're gonna test on this first lead. And there we've got 13.17 and we're plugged into shore power right now. So that's what I'd expect. So um, that means that if we just to show you, so these are our two battery lines here. These are what are going to hook into the charge controller going out to the battery. These other two are coming in from the solar panels. But if you had any question about which two were which, 
if we test this other red one, we've got no voltage. And then if we move our ground test lead over to the other ground, we've got no voltage there and we've got no voltage there. So, so there's no way you can screw this up. We're gonna go back and check this again. I believe this was the one and there's our voltage. So we're gonna to wanna to label these right away here. First thing you need to do is hook up the battery input to the charge controller. Technically these labels are a little redundant because they are color coded, but I thought as long as I was doing it, I'd do it right. So battery minus, even though we probably could have just put battery um, here's battery plus, and then we've got solar plus and minus. Okay, so here we are. So I had the time lapse there. Sorry, not the greatest angle. I'm not super high tech with my equipment here, but here's the end result. And I'm really happy with this. Um, the wires, I kind of intentionally put that hole there. You know, of course I could mount this up or down a little bit, but I didn't want to be too close because there's heat sink. So I didn't want to cause any issues with the wiring, but I also wanted it to be a nice clean install. So the wires tucked really neatly in there. As you can see, I fed the extra back in there. It's always great to have extra wire. So don't cut that off, just tuck it back in the wall. Uh, and then I intentionally mounted this all the way over this way. And you could probably do it all the way that way too. But the reason I did that is because there's a stud right here. I believe it's like a two by two stud. So these two screws, and I also use these standoffs, the heat sink back here, obviously is to dissipate heat. And they send the standoffs, which you do not have to use, but I thought any extra little space would be great. Uh, but what I did on the other side, because you're just going into really thin wood, and so these are gonna take the brunt of the mounting. But on the other side here, if you can see, I put a little bit of adhesive caulk behind those pads and then ran screws through. So the screws are kind of just gonna initially hold it while this, the adhesive dries. Um, but, you know, in the end, we've got the adhesive end of screws on that side, and we're into a stud on that side, so it's not going anywhere. And so far, this has been super easy because, you know, now, of course, I need to get the panels on the roof, but that was a very easy install. No wires to run. Yes, and now I'm going to get on the roof and do the panels. So here we are. I've got my stack of panels sitting right here. I'm going to lay them out. I've got plenty of room for these panels up here. Um... This is just a, not a huge roof, but plenty big for these four panels. Now, if you look over here at my 190, you can see the one flexible panel. And I did a little bit of research and came to the conclusion that although convenient, the flexible panels are definitely not the best ones to go with. And initially that's what I really wanted because I just thought, oh, the convenience and like the low profile and all that. But after doing some research, I went a different direction. But there's the factory installed solar package on this 190, which there again is pretty wimpy. And then if you look over here, this is prepped. So we've got our, our hookup right there for the panels. So now I just need to lay these panels out. I haven't put the feet on them or anything. I'm gonna lay them out and kind of see where they fit the best. And also keeping in mind that maybe uh, I could potentially add some panels later. So I wanna make sure that I don't just take up extra space if I don't need to um, and allow for maybe sneaking another panel or two later. So after figuring out what layout, I'm gonna do three of them right across the front here and then the fourth one right here. Um, the next thing that I did was I used my stud finder to locate where the roof supports are, where the, the studs, if you will, I believe they're aluminum crossbars in the ceiling are because I want to be mounted into those. And so I've got one right across the front. I'm mostly worried about the front end. So I've located one across the front, so I should be able to get the feet mounted on these. And I'm going to see if I can maybe mount feet on the back that also lines up with studs.
So the next thing I'm gonna do here, which really you should probably do before you even get them up on the roof, is check voltage with them out in the sun and verify that it's in with, within the spec that it says on the sticker on the back. So I'm gonna go through all four of these and just verify they're all putting out the voltage they're supposed to be. So I've got all the mounting brackets on. I've cleaned off all the spots under them with denatured alcohol. And now I'm going to put some Magnus Bond 76 AM self-leveling. This is stuff that I used to work at a truck body shop and this is what we used to seal up the roofs. So this is gonna be excellent. You can do research, figure out what you wanna use in particular. This is what I'm using. So I'm gonna put this under the pads, set the pads back down and then run screws in to mount these solar panels in. Then I'm gonna leave it for a couple hours or maybe even a day, and then I'll come back and I'll finish doing all the wiring. We don't wanna fool around once we've put this stuff down. You could wire it first and then do this, but I am choosing to just do this and walk away so that I don't make a mess while I'm trying to wire it. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna walk away now, but there's what it's all looking like. And I've got all my wiring here. I've already got one panel plugged in and then I got this one that's a ways away. So uh, what I'm gonna have to do, I've got connectors. Sorry for the shadowing here. I've got, <clears throat> I've got a crimper, I've got connectors. I bought a bit of extra wiring. This wiring actually came with it. This is the wiring that came with it to run down to the controller, which was already pre-wired for me. So I've got all this extra. I also have another spool. So I got to do a little bit of wiring, a little bit of crimping, but then I should be able to cleanly get all these hooked up. Okay, so I'm going to be making up the couple last cables. I've already made a couple of them. It is about as easy as it gets. I will put a link in the description for the crimper that I got along with the extra connectors. <laughs> I've got the last couple cables here uh, that I've, I've uh, measured to length, and now I just need to put the connectors on. So we're gonna start here, um, and these are easy. It's pretty tough to get stuff in the wrong order. So we've got a smaller pin and a larger pin, the male and the female. So we're gonna start out with the male one here, and this looks like it's already bent a little bit. I'm gonna try and open that up a hair. So we're gonna get the wire in here. And then the crimper that I got, we're uh, using the largest die in it. And we want the tabs facing towards the W, if we look at it like that. So we're gonna line it up, center it. Everything looks good. And then we'll crimp it. And there we go. So uh, now the important thing is that when we flip it to the other side, we wanna make sure that we put the other pin on. Now this is the female end. So that one's not bent, so that slid right on. Then we're gonna take our crimper, line that up, make sure it's centered. Give it a good crimp, and there you go. You can see how those tabs folded over into the wire. Uh, so that's a really solid connection. I mean, you can tug on these to verify, but that's good. So now, the last thing to do is to put our connectors on. So the larger female one goes into the male end. So we're going to unscrew this here. And you've got a couple parts in here. So you want to make sure you get things in the right order here. The nice thing is you can crimp this on and then install these. This weather pack would be what you'd call it if it was a car connector. Not sure what these are called. And then finally, we've got this, and this should slide right in and lock into place. So we're looking good with that. So now we're gonna slide that back there. Twist that on. And there you go. Now we'll flip it over to the other side. Same deal here, we'll slide 
that on. We'll slide that on and then push that in until it locks in place. Tuck that back there. Tighten that down. There we go. There's just the short little cable that I needed to finish off one of the little runs. And now I've got one more little one even shorter than this, about a foot long I need to make up. I'm gonna make up that last one and go and finish plugging it all in. So here's the finished product up top. And you can see by custom making a couple of lengths of cable right here and right here, uh, the, the worst looking part of all of it is all the bulky Y adapters there. Uh, and then you can't see them because they're buried in that self leveling. But uh, I use some of the zip tie, the square adhesive backed zip tie blocks that you stick down and you can hook a zip tie through them and tie down wires. So I used several of those here. And then I, just to reinforce it, put the self-leveling around it, not to seal it because it didn't penetrate the roof, but just to help adhere it down to the roof. So uh, all in all, I think that's a pretty clean install up here. Nobody's going to see it anyways, but uh, I think that worked out pretty nice. And I like the way these panels laid out. Um, I think I could stick one more panel right here. And I also think I could put one more panel right here. So uh, and who knows, maybe I could even sneak one over here, but uh, I, I have room to expand if I feel like this isn't big enough. So we're going to kind of try it out and, and see how these four panels do. But um, so that that pretty much concludes part one of the install, which is panels on the roof and solar controller inside. 